morning, good morning, my all of us. Good morning. Those of us with the sanctuary word and also those who are at home, we welcome you to our morning worship experience this morning. We know that God is good. For those I see, I see you. God says it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. One more time, amen. And I know that we are the church, and wherever we go, the church is with us. But it's good to see the saints gathered in one place at one time. So we ask that you be, uh, and, and just as we're in the sanctuary, be at home, wherever you are, that you treat this as that the saints coming together in one body. Amen. God said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there will I be in the midst thereof. So we're going to start off with our devotional period this morning. We'll have uh, Deacon Carroll comes up, and he's going to lead us in prayer. Brother Lonnie, got another deacon, is going to lead us in our uh, scripture, and we just thank God for these two that's coming and represent our deacon board. Brother Ron, I give him the nickname Faithful because he always seems to be there when needed. And Brother Carol, I love some of the old songs he brings back and everything, but God is a good God. So let us get together and worship together this one. Amen? Amen. Amen.
But we want to come back into the sanctuary. I know some people are hesitant, but those who are not, though, we want to come together in the church. Yes, as I said earlier, we are the church. Wherever we go, the church is with us. But it's something about seeing the saints all together in one place. I, I don't know. I, I, I like to say, see, I saw a number that couldn't be numbered. I, I like to see some folks once in a while. Amen? Amen. 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 I don't mind talking on Zoom and all that, but sometimes Zoom don't give you that spirit feeling. Amen. Amen. So let, let us be, let's be think that. Also, Brother Johnson, Ron Johnson, you know, I remember Church in Boston's mother recently, I received a call or a message that he wanted to thank his church. Pastor, he wanted to thank the church and everybody for helping out the funeral and the homecoming of his mother. He was out of town at this time, but he said he'd make sure to call because he wanted to make sure we told, he told every member of the church, everybody helped out from past home down to that he was grateful and the family was grateful for all that, that they did on his behalf at home. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to have what Reverend Norman started this, and hopefully we can. We're going to have all the prayers still. You know, I know we're here in, in media, social media, but in the church, but prayer is a precious and, yeah. and, 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 and important thing. Amen? And I heard my brother here pray about this pandemic and everything. I know we got doctors working on it. we got other people working on it. You know, scientists working on it. I have nothing against science, but there's somebody we need to be reaching out to. Amen. That, He's the only one that's going to get us to do this. Amen? Amen? And that's Jesus. Amen? And that, that's God. God, he, God look, he's, he, he's a healer. Amen? Amen? And he can heal this man and he can heal this problem. So those who are at home, I'm asking you to stop whatever you're doing. It just takes a few minutes to consecrate yourself. If you have altar prayer, those who are in the sanctuary, you can be staying in your seats. But we're going to have altar prayer this morning. Because it says the, the prayer of a righteous. Man, a bit of much, amen. It didn't say the prayer of the Baptist, the Church of God, Christ, Apostolic. It said the prayer of the righteous. And he said, man, this including everybody, gentlemen, women, and children, we fell this month. So let us bow our heads as we go. And those of you at home, stop whatever you're doing. Take a few minutes and give it over to the Lord. Dear Father, we come in the name of your son Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this day, Father. We thank you for the privilege of coming out to the house of prayer. One more time, Father. We pray for those who are at home, Father, not able to come out this morning. But God, we know that just as you cover us here in this church, you're covering them in their home, wherever they are, Father. We thank you for all that you've done this day, Father. Father, we look back over these past couple of weeks, Father. We just need to say thank you this morning, Father. Father, many have been called home, Father, and, you, and, you, and you, the harvest has been plentiful, Father, and you harvest folks is coming home, Father, and you're bringing them home, Father. But, Father, I look around on the TV, and, I, and our country's in chaos right now, Father. Uh, brothers losing sisters, sisters losing brothers, fathers losing mothers, children losing mothers, Father. Oh, God, what have we come to, Father? We in a world, Father, that you did not want us to be, but we know why the world is the way it is, and that's called sin in the world today, Father. We rebuke that in the name of your son, Jesus, Father. Father, I call on everybody under the sound of my voice, Father, to lift up their voice in prayer and to tell the Lord, we just need you right now, Father. We need you every place we go. We need you in the church. We need you at home. We just need you right now, Father. Oh, God, I hear everything on the road. we got an election coming up, and everybody is, is worried about the election. They're worried about who's going to be in charge. But I want you to know one thing. I'm not worried about who's going to be in charge, because I know who really is in charge right now. It has nothing to do with who's going to be in the White House. It has nothing who's going to be in the Senate. It has nothing to be in the governor's house. I'm telling you, the governor comes and goes. The president comes and goes. But I know one person who I can call always count on. I told you from the beginning when I came back to the church, I will never stop loving you, Father, because you've been so good to me. Church, we need to say thank you this morning. God has been good to you with all those under the sound of my voice this morning. He has allowed you to wake up this morning and be in your right mind as the saints. But we got to understand this. Stop worrying about what man is doing. Don't put your trust in man, but put your trust in God. He has never let you down. How many of you can remember when things was hard and tough, but you didn't know you were going to make it, but somehow God brought you through. I don't know about you. There's a time when my grandparents didn't have all that I had, but yet they had a faith. And they began when things started getting tough with them. They didn't throw in the towel. They fell on their knees and called on the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I have some children and some grandchildren. They come to me for some advice sometimes. And I have to say, Lord, let me give them a word from you. 
you, Father. We need Jesus right now. This country needs Jesus. I pray for those workers in the hospital who's laboring to save those who are sick. I pray for those who have lost loved ones. I lift them up to you, Father. Yes. Oh, God, we know you are God, Father, who's a forgiving God, but also a God of healing and a God of salvation. Oh, God, we thank you for all that you've done, Father. But we must know one thing, Father. We need to turn back to you, Father. We thank God for you, Father. This, this pandemic, Father, you know, Father, and my brother said, you can handle it, Father, for you are the healer. The saints used to say, you are a doctor in a sick room. You're a lawyer in a courtroom. He said, you know, whatever trouble we in, that you will be there with us. I thank God that every time I step, and I stepped in the wrong place, you step with me and take me off, Father, and brought me on the right trail one more time. I'm telling you, saints, God is a great God. He's a good God. Those who at home and those in the sanctuary, we just need to say thank you this morning. Thank God that you woke up this morning. Thank you that you were all right this morning. Yes, we got some aches and we got some pains and we don't know about certain situations, but if we just give it over to God, God will work it out for us. I don't know about everybody else, but I thank God for the faith of those old saints when times of trouble came. They did not give up. They began to talk to the Lord because they knew that he would take care of anything. They made it through. And we just need to have the faith that those old saints used to have. Some of them didn't have the clothes. Some didn't have cars. But yet they still believe and sing the praises of God and falling on their knees and praying to God. And God delivered them. Thank God for the faith of the saints. Thank God for the faith of those who didn't have what they needed. But thank God because of what they did, we are here this morning. I
But in the meantime, church must be the church. Amen? Amen. We give God praise. It's good to be with you. One more time, to everybody that's observing out there, God bless you, God keep you. And just remember, how much God loved you. John 3.16 says, God so loved you that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believed in him will never perish, will never perish, but they will have eternal life. So we trust in God every day. And, and, and this one day as we come, we just want to take a look at the church. I'm wearing it. A shirt, this one with vision. This one by Mount Long Church and every third Sunday, although this is the fourth Sunday, the last Sunday of the month of October. Time is flying by, the year is coming and going. And this just says vision, vision 2020. 2020 is about over for us now, and our, our, our vision for this year and our theme for this year was hopeless, and that to be faithful, to be obedient, and to be committed. And to be united in service for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. And, and it seemed that somewhere along the line, Satan got rid of that, tried to uh, throw a monkey wrench into it called the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell us today that nothing can stop the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Nothing should stop the church. We've become in the United States a post Christian nation, so I'm told. Uh, there was a time that Christ was the head of our lives. There was a time that the church uh, uh, was the light and salt in this old world, and, and especially in the United States. But it seemed as if now that even the body of Christ had taken a, a, a step backwards. And we're depending on everything except for the Lord. Amen? And, and, and it seemed as if the church had become afraid to even stand on the street corner to tell somebody about the love of Jesus. We know that the hearse wheels are still running. People are like dying, not just for the coronavirus that never known. It's that cancer is taking people like automobile accidents. There's death in the streets. People are shooting each other. People are leaving this place. Yeah. And many without knowing Jesus. And if you don't know Jesus as the Redeemer, as your Redeemer, as your Lord and your Savior, and if you die in that state, the Bible says, not that be, the Bible says it. But God so loved the world that he don't desire that any soul should be lost. But all come to understand who Jesus is. Now I'm here to tell us today that the church is still the church. Yes. And, and I like what people say that the building is not the church. No. We're the church. So what's the church doing? What is the church doing? How many have we reached in the last six months? What is the church doing? But I thought this morning, God is trying to tell us something. God is trying to tell us something. And it's out of Isaiah. We'll look at two scriptures and we'll be on. Isaiah 43, beginning with verse 14 and 9 through 19. And Matthew 6, 33. Isaiah 43, 14. Thus said the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, your, for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as fugitives that the Chaldeans who rejoice in their sheep, ships. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator, the creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord, who made a way in the sea, and a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariots and the horses, the armies and the power. They shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinguished, they are quits like a wind. Verse 18. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the, consider the things of old. Verse 19. The whole and that means look, look, look. Observe. I'm doing a new thing. Yes. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? The, the better translation. Do you see it? Do you know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. And Matthew 633 says, 
except it is. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Amen. Father God, we love you. We need you. Please, Heavenly Father, speak through me today. Speak to me today. Speak to us today. Lord, you have left your church here to be light and salt. You have left the body of Christ here in this world to represent you. And Father, I pray that something might be said today that will show us what we need to do. And I know you are speaking loud and clear, Lord. Give us an ear to hear. But the Spirit is saying to the church. And I pray this in the loving name of Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Amen. We've heard it in our prayers and in our songs and in our commentary this morning already that we're in a time of, 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 of heartaches and pains that is, in our lifetime, something that is new to us. We have not seen what we're seeing now. We are seeing uh, people fall away left and right. People have given up. And I've never ever seen uh, in, in our country, in our 73 years, where the church has been shut down for almost a year now. When I mean shut down the church, what I'm saying is that we can't come together for a worship service like God has said, for say not to serving yourself together. But when Satan rises up and says, I need to stop the movement of God. I need to stop the church because I know what the church can do. But I need to score up that church because I do know that the wages of sin is death. I know Satan says that Jesus is the answer for this world, but if I can keep them out of the church closed, people won't know the answer for the highest of all their pain. People won't know that there is a deliverer. People will not know that there is a God in heaven that loves them unconditionally. People will not know and understand that even through COVID-19 or through cancer or whatever's going on in their life, that there is a deliverer that will be there for them. God, through uh, Isaiah, began to talk to his people. You see, his people were in captivity. They were down in Babylon. They were in the midst of their hearts and pains. When it seemed like every time when God delivers people, we just fall back into some nonsense again. No. We, 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 God bring us up and we rejoice and shout. And it's not long after that that we are forgetting all about who he is. That he's our great deliverer. And, and, and now they're in Babylon and, 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 and they're in a state now where they're praying and seeking God. And that Reverend Gong said, God is going to send an answer. And he told them through Isaiah. He said, I am God. I am the king. I am the Lord. And he repeated that over and over. Church, we need to get that he is the great I am. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He's everything that we need. And sometimes I think we forget. We get the woe is me. We get the worry. We, get, we become very concerned. And righteously so. There is a depth out there that we don't understand. But guess who knows it all again? Almighty God. And if we want to know what's going on, we just need to know God. We just need to be led by His Spirit. We just need to say, we're going to trust in the Lord with all our heart. And not to all understand. We just need to know that God has everything under control. And I don't need to sit back and fear. Even if I, and if I get sick, even if I go through this or that, God is right there with me. And He reminded the people, He said, Remember, when you were down in Egypt, in captivity, and some of us in Egypt right now, not physical Egypt in Africa, but we're in our own destruction right now. And he said to his people, do you remember when, when, I, when I brought you out with a strong hand? Can you see God's children in turmoil, in slavery, trying to make bricks out of straw? Been there for 400 years and, and, and it seemed as if there was no end to it. But they began to pray and God heard their voice and they raised up a man named Moses. Moses was placed in a river and brought into Pharaoh's house because Moses was to uh, uh, be a, 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 a boy of death when he was two years old. But God raised him up and then set him out of the place. And I'm reminded, Reverend Norman, that Moses made excuses for how he could not go back to Pharaoh to talk to the king and tell him to let God's people go. He said, I can't talk around. I think the church today is all full of excuses. 
When God said you can do it, yes. when God said do it, yes. you can do it. Mm -hmm. Moses went down and told Pharaoh, let my people go. Yes. And then the people got everything together. Mm -hmm. People got their lives together. They had to kill the fat, uh, 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 lamb and, and put the uh, blood on the doorposts and the lentils and, 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 and eat the meat and, and, and not save it for the next day. And, 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 uh, and, and they had to leave out of, out of Egypt. And they say, the Bible says that as on their way out, did you see they were skipped to the loop. Mm -hmm. They had joy. They were leaving out. God was leaving them through, through his man Moses. And then all of a sudden, the coronavirus, no, the Red Sea. <laughs> Here they are facing the Red Sea, and somebody said, Do you hear? And then they began to turn and look and saw the clouds of Pharaoh's army coming. And but Moses and, and even when the people begin to rise up against Moses and say, uh, we can't handle the, we need to shut the church down. We need to stop this movement. We can't go any further. We need to stay home. Our God is able, but we need to go back into captivity. We need to go back into Egypt. Mm -hmm. And all God said, stand still and see my glory. Uh -huh. Moses stretched forth to the rock. And, and, and when, the, when he stretched forth that rod, that stick that was in his hand, God moved. And the Bible says the waters of the Red Sea part. Now, I don't know about you. And Moses said, come on, there's millions and millions coming out uh, of Egypt, mm -hmm. going through the Red Sea on dry land. Yeah. That I would have been looking up at the walls of the water and saying, Lord, keep them up there for a little while. Don't let them fall down on me. But I can't you see the, 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 the trust in God yes. and that they had as they went through. God said, don't remember that anymore. I'm going to do a new thing. Yes. That was just something small to get you out. And for me, that was a powerful thing. Can't you see the Red Sea rolling up? Yeah. And they walked through on dry land. Saints of God, the coronavirus is nothing like the Red Sea. If God can move the Red Sea, if God can speak, then the whole world came into existence. Yeah, He's talking to us right now. He's trying to tell us about something about this coronavirus and about everything else that is going on. He said, don't remember that thing anymore. He could tell Gideon and his army. But Gideon's army was reduced to only 300 to 5,000. And they didn't have to fight. They just had to take their position. And God fought their battle. But don't remember that anymore. When, when, when the Hebrew boys uh, decided that they were going to trust Almighty God rather than to bow down to the things of this whole world, to the leadership of this whole world. They decided that it wasn't Trump or Biden, that they were going to put their trust in, they were going to put their trust in Almighty God, and, 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 and the king said, if you don't bow down, you're going to go into the fiery furnace. We hear those same reverence today. But they said, oh king, live better. But we're going to trust God and not man. If I die, Esther said, let me die. We're going to live for the Lord. Uh -huh. And it's all through Scripture. Yeah. And even in our lifetime, we see those same men and women understanding that God is able. And then God began to tell us that. Don't remember that stuff anymore. Uh, yeah, I brought you out. But I'm going to do something great that you've never seen before. I'm going to do something so powerful that it made the Red Sea and the Jordan River and, and, and the lion's den and all of that other stuff uh, pale to what I'm doing right now. Uh -huh. Because uh, it's going to happen. Yes. And then when you look at it, you're going to see that I am for real. I am Almighty God. In your lifetime and in my lifetime, he said, I'm going to do it for you. Yes. He said, I'm going to make, and in the jungle, when you're going through the desert, I'm going to make water I'll sprout up in the desert. And then he goes on to say, even in that the lions and the bears and the wild beasts of the area would honor me. Say, we just need to honor God with our lives. Yes. Now, God, we need to dream. Mm -hmm. That's why I have a vision show. We need to dream and dream big. Yes. Don't let a pirate stop us from telling somebody about the love of Jesus Christ. Yeah. If we can't do it when we used to do it, God said, I got to have a better way for you to do it. Mm -hmm. Dot, dot, yes, we can zoom into Congo. Yes, we, we can Skype into Congo. Yes. 
We can, we can go online and teach Bible lessons around the world. Whoever thought that Mount Olive, we've been in the Congo, we've been into Mexico, we, and physically have been into Haiti, but right now we can't go, but God is not stopping that. God is saying, go, go, and I'll give you the means to go. Yes. I'll give you electronic means, I'll give you whatever is necessary to reach one more place. My desire is that none should be lost. He is saying. So, now God and every other local congregation of congregations around the world, nothing can stop. It's a health group church. Nothing can stop the body of Christ. I heard somebody say when we were in Walmart, and I was in Walmart a couple days ago, and when I saw astonished me, and I've seen it before, but this time God showed me something. I had my mask on. And I would say if there was a hundred people and there was probably that or more, maybe one did not have a mask. Yeah. And I was looking around at people. And they were like stoic. They were just going, picking up and going. There was little or no conversation. Because everybody had a mask. And don't get me wrong, wear your mask. Keep yourself protected. But Satan is busy. I can even see their eyes out there. All their faces. Mm -hmm. Some of the see from that shield. Mm -hmm. But everybody was muffled. Mm -hmm. Satan is saying, if I can stop the people of God and keep them quiet, then heaven would not have one more soul to have. And I would have them all with me in total punishment and damnation. I want everybody to die and go to hell for me and in torment. But Jesus is Christ saying, I want everybody to go to glory. And he left you and me here to tell them how to get there. And he told Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come through the Father but through me. And I'm leaving you, Thomas, and I'm leaving you, Eddie, and Deirdre, and all of you to tell somebody that the wages of sin is death over the gift of God. Is eternal life in Christ Jesus. And as I walk through there, I believe God placed it in my heart. I didn't take my mask off me, but I began to smile inside the mask. And I walked past him, I took the head back. And he could see people nodding back. I said, okay, Lord. At first, you walk past them. They were just a straight face. Just no one looked at you. You just passed out. But all of a sudden, when you start giving low wave, shaking the head, they waved and kind of took their head back. I said, okay. So now, God, we've got to do everything that God gives us. We have to go everything that God tells us to go to spread the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. The Great Commission says that, that we must go into every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Great Commission says, go ye therefore. And he said, he will be with us always. It didn't say go after the coronavirus is left. It did not say go after uh, your health is good. He said go when you feel like it, when you don't feel like it. Go. When the world is up against you, go. And we have to figure out in our hearts and our minds how we do that. Yes. The front door opened, I saw a homeless guy walk past, and this uh, a while ago he went down and he came back. He looked like he was holding up a, a small child in his arms. And, and uh, a couple of days ago, I was pondering, but we have our homeless group, and, and it seemed like you have got to minister to the homeless. They need to have more than, when they come around and I'm out here, I give them a sandwich or give them a cold drink of water, and that's good. When you give it to them, you give it to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But he said to me, in my spirit, in my audible voice, you've got to minister to them. And, and I asked one of our members to pray with me about that. How do we do this? Because in my mind, once you start bringing, bringing, you know you're going to have two or three hundred brain things. And that's fine. In God's eyesight. But my eyesight was, boy, how are we going to be overrun and inundated, this and that? So I asked one of the ministers. And they said, no, you can't do that. I was shocked with that. And I said, why? Because what are we going to do with them if they give their life to Christ? Hmm. Whoa, that's what we want to do. See them give their life to Christ. God loved the homeless just like he loves us. 
He didn't die to just for blacks or whites or uh, uh, Hispanics or uh, Asians. Or, he died for all so that all might have an opportunity to live. And if there's somebody that don't have a place to lay their head, our Lord Savior didn't have a place to lay his head. If there's somebody out there that did not have, do not have the food to eat, we must tell them that uh, 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 we can give them food, but let them tell them where the food came from. Came from Almighty God. Yes. Someone needs a cool drink of water. Jesus said, Well, and, and, and after the lady said, Well, give me something to drink. And all of a sudden, her life was changed. We must meet the needs that God brings before us. And we can't stop doing that. Don't let the coronavirus, don't let anything stop us from sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with whoever God brings into our path. But the wages of sin is still death. And like I said before, the hearse field is still over. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. So, the body of Christ seemed to be worried and concerned. Somebody said the body of Christ is scared. I don't know about all that, but God said, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on. And he's reminding us that he is the king of kings. Yes. He is the Lord of God. If he can feed the sparrows of the air, if he can clothe the lilies of the field, and he watched over you and me, he watched over us for all these many years. And he's still the same God. Yes. And he still will be there with us. Through ups and downs and trials and tribulation, our task is to trust him. Yes. And then the Bible says in but in, in, in Matthew 6, 33, you're getting all of that other stuff, what you're going to wear, what you're going to drink, what you're going to put on. It says, first, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, yes. and all this other stuff will be given to you. Yes. If we need new Zooming equipment, and we do, but we need new podcast equipment, and we do, seek God's kingdom, yes. seek the rule of God, seek the peace of God. And everything that we need to build up the kingdom, not to tear it down, not to stay uh, uh, status quo, but to build up the kingdom, even through a, 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 a virus that we're going through, through time that we're going through, when everything seems to be shut down, we can still do the work of ministry. Yes. If we seek God first. Put our hands in the Master's hand. Put our hands in Him, in His hand. Trust Him. Because He did something great for us. He said, Behold, I'll do a new thing, something you've never seen before. He said, I'll come down into this whole world, and I'll die for you. Before I sent the servant Moses, I sent Elijah, I sent David, I sent all of those, but now I'm coming down. He came down through a, through, a, through a virgin birth. He came down through 42 generations. His son came down and was born in this whole earth. Went through everything, experienced everything that we are going through. Without a home. And, 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 and when, they, when they didn't have all the food to eat, he told the disciples to go get some food. They said, where are we going to get it from? And there was a little lad that had uh, two fish and five loaves of bread. And it fell and it fed 5,000 people. Yes. God is the same God. Yes. He has not changed. He's still feeding us. He's still taking care of us. But what we need to do is trust him. Trust him. There's no fear in God. Uh, faith casts out that fear. God is not uh, a hotel. <clears throat> not a this way. Sometimes, when God said, go this place, that place, I've been invited to Venezuela in, in 2021 and Mexico in 2021. We want to go back to Africa and Haiti. Yes, the Lord. Uh, and uh, uh, somebody said, make sure God's coming. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's something I can do on my own and end up needing God's help, God is not telling me. It's just me telling me I'm going to do it. When God tells you to do something, He takes you out of your comfort zone. Listen carefully. When God wants to use you for the kingdom, and He is the king of the kingdom, and that's why we seek the kingdom first, His rule first. <laughs> he said, if I want you to go over there or over there or down here, He said, I'll, I'll make a way for you. I'll go with you. I'll be there. So fear cannot be there, even if we are apprehensive a little bit, like Moses was, I can't talk, or like uh, Isaiah, like Jeremiah was, uh, I'm too young. 
He said, I'll speak to you. And I'll be a mouthpiece. I'll walk with you. Then all of a sudden, those barriers that used to fit, uh, bring fear in us, we can walk boldly into those barriers. Because he came, he did a new thing. He didn't send his prophets. He sent his only begotten son to die for you and to die for me. He took the wages of sin, which is death, mm -hmm. and nailed them on the cross. He took your sins and my sins that would have put us in the pit of hell and offered them to, and to give to us as a free gift. We don't have to pay for it. No. He said, trust me, trust me, and I give you eternal life. You'll be in glory, but there'll be no more heartaches, no more pain, no more death, no more dying. But in the meantime, you're my ambassador. In the meantime, you're my child. In the meantime, you're the light, not of the church, but of the world. Yes. You have to shine right in the world. Yes. To go out and make disciples yes. of all nations. Yes. In church, when we do that, we will see them coming in. <coughs> Maybe not into the building, but into the body of Christ. Yes. And I pray that the building be packed up again. God gave us over 30, uh, rather 30,000 square feet to fill it up with activities for the kingdom of God. When we're feeding the hungry on third, uh, on Fridays and Wednesdays, uh, we're feeding them and we're giving them Jesus at the same time. When we're having uh, this group here, the karate class or that class, we're, we're, we're teaching them, but we're giving them Jesus at the same time. When the school of mission is, is having students come through, they are learning all about Jesus and ready to go on a mission field. We need to fill it up. We need to fill it up. But where there is no vision, People perish. So, leaders, write the vision down and make it plain. And those that read it, they shall run with it. So, write the vision down and make it plain. And let them know that God is with you always, even until the end of the age. Father, we love you. We thank you. We magnify your name. We thank you for your grace and mercy. Lord, through this Bible, you are speaking to us. And you're speaking loud and clear. Some of us have decided to keep our mouths closed. Some of us have decided that we can't do a thing. Some of us have decided that, that the church is, is just a, uh, closed up, can't go on. We won't do a thing. But if we are truly a child of God, and as your spirit moves in our life, you will show us how we need to do this thing yes. in a way that has never been done before. Oh, Lord, we love you. Thank you for our salvation. Yes. We thank you for the fact that you will never leave us nor will you forsake us. And I pray, Heavenly Father, for all that's listening today, wherever they might be listening from, that they will know and understand that you love them. You love us with an unconditional love. And your desire for us to be safe, but we also be trusting in you. That we can go out and reach the lost for Christ. Show us how, and we will do it. And I praise us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. 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 God bless all of you. I want to thank all of you for your, and your tuning in to us. And keep my wife being in your prayers. For, uh, on this Wednesday, I'm going to serve you. And uh, you can pray for her for a few weeks and months. Maybe she will have to drive me around. <laughs> and uh, that taking her out of her comfort zone just a little bit. But uh, God is good, is I want to thank all of you for your online giving and your sending your money in uh, for tithes and offerings because it's so very important that we continue to do work with ministry. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Zeiss and the, uh, uh, and the um, food uh, and, and the feeding Fresno ministry through the West Fresno Ministerial Alliance. Uh, it seems like the donations are coming in yes. and the turkeys and the food baskets are coming in. So keep uh, 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 bringing the money on the 21st of November. Yes. Our task is to feed over a thousand families yes. with a, uh, Thanksgiving turkey yes. and well as the, all the trimmings that go along with it. And we can only do this with your help as God be. Amen? Amen. Well, God bless you. God keep you. Continue to keep now out of church in your prayer and his leadership, Reverend Norman, and all of the others in your prayers. And I hope to see you again uh, soon. Blessings now. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you, Pastor.